Hey guys, James here. It's been a while since I've done a one-on-one -on -one with you guys, so I figured I'm gonna make this video and catch up with you guys. And while I do it, I figured I might as well do my makeup too. It's a win-win. Using the professional on the areas of the skin, like my nose and my cheeks, around the beardy area. I just got done with RuPaul's Dragon, and I have to say, it's so much fun. I got to meet all you guys, and got to see a bunch of the girls I hadn't seen in a while. Like all my season nine girls, a bunch of girls I never met before from different seasons, as well as like a bunch of people from social media. My table was situated right in the middle of the convention center. I was right behind Pandora Box and Angina. And Angina is so cool, you guys. She came over like several different times just to say hi and just chit chat. Which is really cool considering like, I was under the impression like they were gonna act like they're bigger than me or whatnot. But no, they're totally down to earth and super cool. And I actually ended up doing a panel with her and Kelly Mantle and Tammy Brown who is just as insane in person as she is on TV. She was going on and on about how she was watching a French movie with Kelly Mantle's boyfriend and how she's been sleeping on her couch for the past four days. And Kelly Mantle's just like, yep, that's an everyday occurrence with Tammy. I'm just adding orange right now to color correct my beard since I have really dark hair. But like I said, it was me, Angina, Kelly Mantle, and Brendan Jordan. We were doing our coming out stories. It was pretty cool. Alright, add on my foundation right now. Oh, uh, the first day was like chaos. It was just me arriving late and setting up as much when I had a little time as possible to do it. And it's one of those things where it's like I got there and I didn't expect to like actually have to work. I thought I'd like set up my table and like jet out, but like people purchase VIP tickets, so it's like crap, I'm not in drag. I have to get in like seller's mode right away. But I feel like me and my team pulled it off. I brought my boyfriend. My friend Dixie Cup and Vinyl Grits and Farouk Voorhees, they were all there with me. And I would say, like, we rocked that shit. We were such a team. It was like, we had literally just landed there. I don't think we'd even been there for, like, two hours. It took us forever to get from the hotel and then walk right across the street to the venue. That's right, girl. I walked. The glamour of it all with all my suitcases. And there was like sprint on over to the convention center where there was like four other conventions going on at the time. And get set up and get ready to sell. And I'm pretty sure the only girl that was in drag there was Trixie. And she kind of scolded me and said, it's not RuPaul's people con. But it's like, girl, I was there for like an hour. Give me a break. Oh, I forgot to take my eyebrows off. Don't mind me. I'm going to look a little bit like a mole rat after this. I'm gonna take a makeup remover and remove my eyebrows. Cause these are my daytime brows. But yeah, this is me without eyebrows. Don't look at me. And back to foundation. Other than that, that was pretty much the first day. Second day it was a lot easier because I got in drag and it was way more people that I had to actually sit down and meet. I met a bunch of different fans from Instagram like Needles on Instagram. Her name is Zoe in real life and she came on my table I think like 18 times. It was fucking awesome She made me this little candle, which is a picture of a saint with Jane Mansfield's face superimposed on it. It's really cute I told her if I get on All Stars 3, I'm gonna pray to it and hope I win. Yeah, I shared my table with Nina Bonita Brown I always forget how good of a team we were outside of the show Because the last time I had seen her was literally in Chicago where it was me her and Eureka So I literally had not seen her until then and she arrived later because her flight was delayed. And I had to say, the minute she got there, she impressed me so much because she did not leave that table once. With me and her, we were there all day. Not get any kind of breaks. I was so proud of her. Because at the end of the day, girl, we were both tired. We were both dragging, but we stuck it out like troopers. I don't know, I felt kind of bad because like, a bunch of other drag queens from other seasons were trying to like come over and meet us and like we had to really like work hard to like bring ourselves to like pause the line so we can talk to them for a second. But everybody was there it was super surreal. I got to meet Johnny McGovern and Lady Red Couture. Do a little interview with Johnny McGovern on the red carpet. And I got to talk a little bit about drag queen history, my favorite subject. And I was surprised, like a lot of the things I mentioned he knew about 
like I mentioned, like people like Crystal LaBeja and Bert Savoy and like really reaching history, you know? And he knew them by name and he knew about it. And he seemed rather impressed that I knew, which was cool. It's always good to get that kind of gratification, you know? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Contour. All right, and I'll just do in some contour. It's like probably my favorite part about doing Dragon was seeing everyone's little elaborate booth setups. Like, Shea Coulee had this really awesome, like, artsy spray painted setup. And Valentino's was like the secret garden that you had to like walk through a whole menagerie in order to get to her at the end. Meanwhile, me and Bodina were like, shirts, teddy bears, we're good. It was like my only real downer from Dragon is that I was just so busy I didn't get to really see anything. But on the upside, it's like I got to meet everybody and meet all my fans, so it well made up for it. I'll see it some other time. I was like, some of the things I wanted to see, like I ended up seeing anyway because the people walked over to us, which was really cool and considerate. Like, I got to meet Devin Green. She passed by and like made an effort to come by and see me. As well as people like Jinx Monsoon and Robbie Turner. I'd say my favorite part was probably seeing you guys I saw several of you walk around with those teddy bear heads on, which made my heart oh, explode. I was so happy to see it. Especially the very, very little fans. That was amazing. There was a little girl and her brother that came with matching heads by little blue teddy bear looks. It just made my heart melt. I was so happy. That's like, talk about attention to detail. She even had the blonde hair to match it. All right, just do my highlight quick. I've changed some stuff up since the last time. I stopped using my Wet n Wild and actually upgraded to the Ben Nye Banana Powder. And I have to say, I can see what all the hype's about. I feel like Kim Kardashian when I use it. Oh, and um, the wrestler Melina from WWE, she actually made a point to walk over to my table and introduce herself to me. How that came about was, a fan had mentioned that he heard I liked wrestling and asked me who my favorite wrestlers were. And I just told him, I love all the women from WWE, all of them. And he was like, okay, and I didn't think anything of it. Next thing I know, she's walking over here telling me that a fan had told her that I love women's wrestling, so she wanted to make sure to come over to personally talk to me and say hello, and she even gave me an autographed picture. It was super surreal, and it's like one of those moments where I'm like trying to keep my composure, like, thanks, yeah, um, great. And it's like, you're just, I'm in the moment, it's like, I love this person, I don't know what to react, and it's the only thing I can say is thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I'm so thrilled. Thank you so much. It's like complete abstract Patsy moment. My mind completely like hit a wall and I didn't know how to function. Kind of like being on Drag Race. And next thing I know, she's gone and it's like, I get back to the hotel. It's like, damn it. I didn't even give her a t-shirt or anything. Needless to say, it was an awesome moment. I'm going to remember it forever. Because literally like I've watched this woman since I was in high school. I'm <laughs> going with the androgyny palette. Start my eyes. Alright, I'm just starting the bases for a cut crease right now. Using Safe Word and Dominatrix. Alright, just using Soft Ochre by MAC. I'm going to start doing the cream over my cut crease. And I'm just setting it with Succubus from the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. It's like I'm always super partial to these products because Kat Von D Beauty used to repost my pictures all the time whenever I used her products before I was on the show. And even Kat Von D herself commented on my picture before. It was like one of those cool, surreal moments. And that's like, I stick to it too, because I love her products. They're super pigmented. And when I worked at Sephora, it was like the brand I knew by heart. All right, just blending out the corners right now. All right, just using Solace from the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. I'm going to cut that crease. And I just posted my P.O. Box information down below now for my videos. So if you guys want to send me any kind of letters or anything like that, information is right down there in the dialog box. But yeah, as you guys haven't noticed, I've been trying out some different techniques with my makeup. Trying to change it up. Habit of being on the show is you see yourself on television. You learn what works and what doesn't. So I've been trying something different with my eyes. Now I'm doing this cut crease thing, which I think it actually looks really cool. 
compared to what I used to do, where it's just, I like, just put like six layers of tan on. I'm gonna start my eyeliner right now. Still using that classic NYX gel liner. Just mixing some of those new techniques with the old. Alright, just finishing up the eyeliner. So I'm starting my eyebrows next. I used to draw them very much with my natural brow. And I decided just to bite the bullet and shave the rest of them off. So I started experimenting with them and started drawing them higher and thicker. Because seeing them on TV, they're very low and thin. And it's just a matter of experimenting with your looks and trying something out that's new and different. And lo and behold, I ended up liking it. So it's part of the look now. But yeah, that's her now. Look at that. Super cunty. It's giving you divine. And I still have some of my actual brow hair out. Like, I still use a little stub from the front to give it more of that natural effect into it. Only now, they go into full Joan Crawford. But yeah, just remember, eyebrows are cousins, not sisters. And sometimes they're kissing cousins. I'm going to start my color in the eyes right now. I'm going with the Beauty Killer palette because it's got plenty of color. Alright, I'm going to go in with some pink right now. I'm using Star Power from the Beauty Killer palette. And I'm going to color up this eye. And just tapping that on. So we get a nice rising pink pigment from it and smoke out. Take a cleaner brush and we're going to buff it out. Raising that eyebrow and just buffing this girl out. With our other brush, we're just going to buff that guy out. Alright, I'm going to apply some into the lid now. So it's not just so plain and white. Using Princess from the Beauty Killer palette as well. Alright, now we got that base going. I'm going to use some glow on it as well. I'm going to use the Anastasia Sweets palette. And I'm going to use Sassy Grape. Alright, just using NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk. Gonna do the under eye quick. A lot's been happening since I last talked to you guys like this. I've actually started touring now, and I'm gonna actually start traveling outside of the country. I'm doing Australia and England, girl. It's exciting. I've never been outside the country before, so I'm a little nervous, but I think it's gonna be good. And a lot of people from the UK have been like tweeting me saying they're excited to see me, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm just going to highlight my brows now. Using the NYX Wonder Pencil, it's going to make sure it's sharp. And redefine the brows. Alright, now our brows are lined. We're going to start doing finishing touches on the eyes. Like for instance, you might have noticed my eyeliner got very, very light from putting all the glows and light stuff over it. So we're going with a darker color. And picking up some black rainbow from Jeffree Star. I'm going to put that over the black eyeliner, just to darken it back up. Alright, just using like an eyebrow brush. I'm going to take that with the dark eyeshadow as well and sharpen up any edges. Alright, just cleaning up and sharpening up those edges. I'm just going to use China White from the Beauty Killer palette as well and highlight the brow bone. Alright, final touches with the eyes. I'm doing an underline right under the eye. And just bringing that line out a little bit. And that's when you have to like super precise with, otherwise if you like do it wrong, it's gonna look like you have like a stroke. Alright, I'm gonna do the contours of my nose right now. You guys might notice, I mean, I'm wearing my new shirt design. I debuted it at DragCon. And it's now available on my website, jamesmansell.com slash store. You got a little sneak preview of it if you saw my Whatcha Packin' episode. But it is now up and officially out in limited stock on my website. So check it out and get yours while they're still there. Because once they're gone, they're gone. That means I'm not making them again. 
But yeah, I think it's a cute design. I did it myself. It's my own artwork, so it's your chance to wear a piece of my artwork on your body. And if you want any of my other shirts, just be sure to hop on over to dragqueenmerch.com, also listed down below. So there's lots of options. And in honor of doing my Texas gigs, I'm going to reset my contour with some Selena. I waited in line at like 4 in the morning to get this bad boy, so I want to test it out and see how it works. I will use a little bit on the lower jawline because doing all this touring girl, that jaw has been going out and out and out. So I'm going to need to mask that as much as possible. As I say, it's been super cool being able to like tour and see different cities and see different people. Like I'm always super happy doing the meet and greets and getting to meet all you guys. And I know a lot of my underage fans out there can't make it out to the bars to see me. So that's why I make these videos for you guys. So you at least get a chance to see me here. There, I have a jawline again. Let's do some blush, girl. Let's do our lips and we're almost done, girl. Picked up this bad boy in the Denver airport. Straight up, the Denver airport has an Urban Decay store there, girl. They had everything there. It was like a shopping mall. I could have got lost there for hours. I'm using Naked 2 right now by Urban Decay for lip liner. And I really like it because it's that nice hue of like rose, deep nude. So if you use like a lighter lipstick like I do, you still can like look like you're wearing lipstick and it's not just like your lips are erased. Let's do our lipstick. Got this at the Sugar Pill Counter at DragCon. This one is Trinket. I saw this guy on Instagram and like fell in love with it. It's that cute little corally nude color. And just pack on the lip. Oh shit, what's happening to my voice? <coughs> <laughs> and I'm maturing. See, I'm using a liquid lipstick. Look how pretty that looks. Oh god. It's time to add the eyelashes. Harking back to my old days of putting on 301s. I used to do this a lot when I first started doing drag. And I just stopped when I made my makeup a little smaller. But now that I got the bigger eyebrows, you have to wear the bigger lashes. It's just part of the trade. Alright, almost there. I'm going to put on some jewelry. I actually got these cute jewels from Amped Up Accessories at DragCon. I walked by the table and realized I had no earrings on. And just browsing, they gave me these to wear for DragCon. They're so sweet. Look how pretty they are. I'm excited to wear them. The only problem is they're clip-ons. But, they're so heavy, they fall right out. So it's like actual drag jewelry. I'm not used to that. I'm used to like, you know, Dollar Tree jewels. So, take a little nail glue. It's going to sound barbaric, but make sure you put some makeup on your ears. And you just tap a little there on the earring. Not a whole lot. And just press that sucker on. Like I said, make sure you have makeup built up on that earlobe, though. Because if you do it on bare skin, when you take it off, it is going to hurt, girl. There. See? Now she's sticking. Say a big thank you to Amped Accessories. These earrings are super cute, girl. So I'm really, really excited because I finally got a Wigs by Vanity. <laughs> and this is her, girl. Look at that lace. Lit against that skin. It's so good. Now, I've been wanting to try these wigs forever, ever since I started doing drag, ever since I heard of them. And I finally got my hands on it. My boyfriend was so sweet and bought me two of them. This is her out of the bag, fresh out. I'm going to show you another one that I actually styled that I'm going to wear today. This is one I actually styled. I pulled her back into my signature ponytail, and I took four drawstring ponytails and created a fall with it. So yeah, that's her. I'm going to put her on today. It's so good. Alright, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change outfits and then glue this girl down and I'll be right back, okay? I'm back! This is the final look. It was so much fun being able to make this video with you kittens and being able to catch up on all the hot things that have been going on in my beautiful, wonderful life. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And comment down below and let me know what you want to see next. I am listening. Until next time, bye!